الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد in this evening we would like inshallah to remind ourselves and those who are present with this great topic a topic which will help build the society from the smallest of this society in the home to the next unit to the next and to the next until the society inshallah is rectified and that is how to build a happy home No doubt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us and He orders us to save ourselves and our families from a fire whose fuel is men and stone. Allah says, أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِكُمْ nara." Save yourselves and your families. وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ Save yourselves and your families from a hellfire, from a fire whose fuel is men and stone. عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ شِدَادٌ Upon that fire are angels, mighty and stern. لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ They are not, they do not go against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands them. They do not disobey Allah in what He commands them. And they, and they fulfill that which they are ordered to do. This verse, قُوْأَنْ فُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارَ First of all, it is preceded with, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said every time we hear the verse, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, we will listen more carefully. Or we will listen carefully. Why? Because either we are going to be ordered with something good, or forbidden from something evil. So Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu would listen what is coming next. In this case, فُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا Save yourself and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stone. Happiness, no doubt. Everybody is looking for it. But happiness is in going back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called us to. Because He is the one who has control of our hearts. Meaning, He is the one that can change our heart, can guide that heart, or can misguide that heart based upon a perversion, a deviation, initially from yourself, you chose to deviate, or you chose the guidance. You have a choice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a will as well. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ الله. So Allah Azza wa Jal, as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قُلُوبُ الْعِبَادِ بَيْنَ أُسْبُعَيْنِ مِنْ أَصَابِعِ الرَّحْمَانِ يُقَلِّبُهَا كَيْفَ يَشَاءَ The hearts of the servants are between the two fingers of Ar-Rahman. He changes it how he wills. Allah knows what is in our hearts. Allah knows if our heart, hearts are rectified or whether they are lazy hearts. Allah knows whether our hearts are sincere or insincere. Allah knows if we love Him the most and love Rasulullah more than anyone. Allah knows if we are turning away from His commandments. Allah knows if we are striving to come closer to Him. Allah knows if we truly seek happiness or not. Allah knows. Because the one who's sincere, Shaykh Rabbi Havudullah said one time, if you are truly sincere to Allah, and you, while in your prostration, you ask Allah for guidance, know that Allah will guide you. Allahu Akbar. Sincerity goes a long way. That heart and its actions goes a long way. From love, from hope, from desire, from fear, from all, that heart is a small piece of flesh, but it goes a long way. As the Messenger Sallallahu said, وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ Indeed, there is a piece of flesh in the body. If it is sound, the whole body is sound. If it is corrupt, the whole body is corrupt. Indeed, it is the heart. That's where it all starts. So do we really want happiness? That's the first question. Because we want a happy home. We all 
are interested in a happy home, a happy life. And how miserable it is you come home and it's, and it's, and it, and it's sad. And the situation is despicable. The situation uh, is just war and battle. How despicable that is. Compared to, and contrast that with, a home that you go to and there's happiness. When you look at your family, your spouse, you're happy. When you look at your children, you're happy. What is true happiness? True happiness, huh? with regards to your family, is that you come home and they are upon the dhikr of Allah. You come home and they are upon the sharia of Allah. That is true happiness. No doubt. Because that will bring about khair for you in this life and in the hereafter. They are he- helping you get to Jannah. A despicable home or sad home and a, and a home uh, that is miserable and dark and, co- and constricted is a home without the dhikr of Allah. Without the remembrance of Allah. Without reminding each other to get to Jannah. That home of fire and brimstone of fighting and argumentation. Huh? Such as in the end, divorce may occur, homes are broken, children left as orphans, broken homes, children without a father or children without a mother, broken homes. Because of what? Because of that which, is, which was left, which was first and foremost, that was important, the dhikr of Allah, a home that is upon the remembrance of Allah. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu. Save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stone. This was Tahrim, verse 6. Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu. Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, said, it means discipline them and teach them. Yes, we all need discipline. And Islam is what makes us we don't make Islam Islam makes us Islam if we follow it properly it will change us into the, a good role model the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the best of the role models and he was best to his family khayrukum khayrukum li ahli wa ana khayrukum li ahli the best of you are those who are best to their families and I am the best to my family and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his example how gentle he was in the household how gentle he was and how kind and how merciful he was sallallahu alaihi wasallam and at the same time he was firm to make sure that there was discipline that there was some education the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam it wasn't just his family his immediate family members but even his cousin cousins and young around him abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu his cousin he made him ride behind him on the way to Hajj. And then he didn't leave his other brother out, Fadl ibn Abbas. He also said, give him a turn, and he gave him a turn as well. And the hadith of Hajj, you have Abdullah ibn Abbas and you have Fadl ibn Abbas. Anhuma. And also other companions. Young companions, Rasulullah from his family members, he took care of them. He took care of them. Even those who were not immediate family members but they lived with them with him Anas bin Malik who lived with him radiallahu anh, for 10 years Anas bin Malik radiallahu anh. his mother Umm Sulaim look how intelligent his mother was Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha she said oh messenger of Allah my son he's 10 years old I want him for you your oh messenger of Allah for, for him to serve you he would prepare the wadu the water that is prepared for the to do the, to perform the ablution, Anas bin Malik Radha would prepare that for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She was so intelligent, Um Sulaim radiyallahu anha, that she gave her son to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam to learn under him, and he became from those Sahaba who narrated the most hadith. Amongst those companions who narrated the most hadith, Anas bin Malik radiyallahu anha. He he became from those Sahaba that the Prophet supplicated for specifically. Allah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi supplicated to Allah to give him rizq and also to give him 
much hair of children and so on. And it was and give him good life, long life. And that's what happened. He lived until past ninety years old, Anas bin Malik Radan, with many children, grandchildren, and much risk. MashaAllah tabarakallah. Good in this life and good in the hereafter. Khair of Barakah comes by going back to Allah and His Rasul. Discipline them, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, discipline them and teach them. And teach them. Ibn Abbas said about that verse, nara. Stay obedient to Allah. First yourself. You have to be an example first. No good out telling others to do something, you don't do it yourself. Why do you say that which you don't do? It is great in the sight of Allah that you say that which you don't do. So start with yourself first and foremost. Yes, we need to be examples for our children. Don't teach them to lie. Some family members, they say to their children, if somebody calls the home, they say, don't tell him I'm here. That you're teaching your son to lie then. You're teaching your daughter to lie. Don't tell them I'm here. And you know you're there. They know you're there. But Abi, but, but don't worry. Just don't tell them I'm here. You're starting to teach them to lie. And lying is one of the most evil of actions. It's a major sin. And the Messenger ﷺ said, إِيَّاكُمْ kadib Be warned of lying. فَإِنَّ الْكَدِبْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورِ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ be wary of lying because lying leads to evil deeds and evil deeds leads to the hellfire. So it all starts from what? From lying. So teaching children to be honest and truthful by you being honest and truthful. So stay obedient to Allah. You in your household, the children will see you if you go out to the prayer or not. Yes, they will see whether you go to the salah or not. And you know what? They will remind you if, you, if you. if they hear the adhan or it comes close to the prayer time, Abi, shouldn't you be going to the masjid? They will remind you. Because now you've got them on that uh, routine of knowing the prayer times. Getting them for up for the prayer, for fajr. Yes. You'd be surprised. Children, for those who don't have them, not all of them are the same. Some of them, mashallah, they get up. Some of them are hard to get up. Huh? Like a stone. And for them, you need huh? that get them to go to sleep early. Get them to uh, have an alarm. Be responsible. Get them to be responsible. Whether it is them having their own alarm clock. Now they feel that, yes, I have to put my own. I can't rely on somebody else. Yes, because you are the one you're going to be questioned in front of Allah. The first question you'll be asked is about your salah. If it is in need, if it is deficient, then the sunnah prayers will be looked into. And the rest of the actions. But first and foremost is your salah. As salah, as salah, ma malakat aymanukum, as the Messenger said before he passed away. The prayer, the prayer, and those under your responsibility. Muhammad al Khattab, before he passed away, he said, La khaira fil Islam liman taraka as salah. There's no good for a person's Islam if he leaves the prayer. So guarding the prayers, حَافِظُ عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى وَقُومُ لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Guarding the prayers. Showing your children education. Inshallah this will come. Huh? Obedience to Allah in all forms. Teaching them at a young age to fast. Children, teaching them to fast. At a young age, occupying them with games and toys. Sheikh Muhammad al-Banna rahimahullah, he said his own father... Uh, his own father, he used to make sure that he has so many games in the house. Why? So that his son doesn't go out in the streets and do bad things. So he used to occupy his children in the house. So even if it means getting them something to play with in the house, to not let them go out in the streets with the bad people. This is an example. Sheikh Muhammad al-Banna rahimullah. Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri, his own household. He has... MashaAllah, Allahumma barik. Naam, his extended family, his children's family, his children, even those that are married, he wants to keep them together in one household. Why? To keep that family structure together. The family unit together. Keeping the ties of kinship. Because one goes this way, one goes that way, one goes down. It, shaitan can attack them. Shaitan can misguide them. 
But when they are with you always or close by you, then you are able to advise them. So Ibn Abbas said, stay obedient to Allah and stay away from disobeying Allah. Don't teach your children huh, to disobey Allah by you disobeying Allah. Oh, prayer time has come. Five more minutes. Ten more minutes. This is what the Shia do. The Rafidah, this is what they do. They delay the Maghrib prayer until the stars come out. Because they consider the prayers to be only three, not five. So they delay prayers. Stay away from disobeying Allah. And from that is music, listening to music. Educate the children to keep away from that which Allah prohibits and that which Allah abhors. You cannot have music and Quran together. One is from Allah, the other one is from Shaitan. Mizmaru Shaitan, as Allah mentioned, so in Najm, the last verses of Najm. فَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيدِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُوهُ This is referring to what? Music. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, Wallahi, the word samada wa antum samidun, by Allah it refers to music. By Allah it refers to music. By Allah it refers to music. Are we going to take Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu's explanation? Or someone who comes nowadays like Qardawi says, no, no problem. Al halal al halal fil Islam. He has a book called Halal Haram, but the scholars say it's called, actually, it's Halal Haram. What is Haram in that book? So many things is said Halal. Stay away from disobeying Allah. In all forms, lying, cheating, deception. Command your families, he said, to remember Allah. Allah. Command your families to remember Allah. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Command your families to remember Allah. The f- that first remembrance of Allah is what? Salah. Getting them up in the morning. Teaching them the adhkar. Ayat al kursi, ya Abdullah. Wa ya amat Allah. Ayat al kursi. Teach your children, wallahi, they can learn as young as two years old. They can recite it if you teach them. Two years old. We've seen it with our own eyes. Two years old. Because you are regularly reciting it just before you sleep with your children. Then two years old, they're reciting Ayat al-Kursi. It's protection. The greatest verse in the Quran. Because all of it is Tawheed. From the beginning to the end. It starts with what? Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al huh? And it ends with Allah's beautiful names. Wa huwa al Ali al Azim. And he is Al Ali, the most high, and he's Azim, the exalted. Starts with Allah, ends with Allah. And all of it is about Allah, the greatest. So teaching them this great verse, which the Messenger Sallallahu said, whoever recites it after every prayer, there is nothing between him and paradise except death. Allahu Akbar. After every salah. And before one sleeps, Allah, if you recite Ayat al-Kursi, as, as, as we should teach our children to do, right until the, uh, uh, the morning, Allah will send an angel to protect you. And angels are stronger than the jinn. Teach them that. Some of them, they get afraid. Shaitan, shaitan, shaitan. Teach them. Shaitan is nothing. When you say, A'udhu Billahi Shaitan Rajim, ah, like a fly, brushing him off. Naam. As one of the scholars mentioned, you have been given so many weapons against the shaitan. Shaitan is nothing in front of the believer. Naam. That's why we should make shaitan toil. Just like, just like an animal. Uh, cultivating the soil that's difficult to cultivate. Make the devil toil in hardship, in difficulty with the dhikr of Allah. Naam. With the dhikr of Allah, you make the devil toil. When you leave your house, you say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. He says, how can I follow you? He's always remembering Allah, how can I follow you? You enter your house, you teach your children, say, Bismillah. He doesn't have a place to stay. When you eat, you teach your children. How many children eat with their left hand? A'udhu billah. Wallahi. I'm shocked. Muslim children. Where are we? Muslim children eat with their left hand. The Prophet said, don't eat with your left hand. For shaitan eats with the left. And one of the scholars mentioned, every time you resemble the devil, you will act like the devil. 
in other affairs. So, if you resemble the devil in eating, if you resemble the devil in your clothes, in the resemble the devil in the way you, yani, huh? in the way you look, eventually you'll be like shaitan in other affairs. That's why the Prophet ﷺ himself said, مَن تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever resembles the people is of them. You resemble the devil, you're of them. You become like them. It's Allah Salama. So don't, this is the hikmah, the wisdom of why we don't eat with our left hand. Why we don't do things like the devil does. Because we don't want to resemble him. Otherwise we'll be like him. In other affairs. May Allah protect us. So the dhikr of Allah in your household Teaching the children as they wake up. Alhamdulillah ladi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. Teaching the children to be responsible in their studies. Shaykh Muhammad al-Banna rahimullah used to say, look, mashallah, we spend all night studies making sure they get the grades. Just before the exams, we are worried. We want the children to pass the exams. But what about the salah? Do we have the same effect on the salah? Do we have the same effect with regards to the deen of Allah? Or are we neglectful regards educating our children? Ibn Abbas continues and command your families to remember Allah. Yes, maybe your wife or maybe the husband hasn't read Quran today. There should be a reminder from each other. Did you read Quran? One page at least? Of course, if you do, how old Jews, mashallah, Allahumma barik. But. As some of the companions, they said, we hate a day to pass by without even looking at a page of the Qur'an. Without even looking at a page of the Qur'an. So reminding each other, of course, this dunya is busy. And shaitan is occupying us. But remember the greater goal, why we are here. Ibn Abbas said, if you do that, he will save you from the fire. Allah will save you from the fire. Mujahid, the student of Ibn Abbas, he said, this verse, nara. It means fear Allah and obey Him. Practicing taqwa. And tell your families to practice taqwa. Tell your families to practice taqwa. So the household should be a household of taqwa. How's the household of taqwa? And they are busy watching Indian movies or Arab movies. How's the household of taqwa? Wasting time, three, four hours. Household of Taqwa in Ramadan, they put this series at iftar time. Neither she read Quran, neither you busy yourself with also taraweeh. You get lazy, you eat, that's it, day is gone. I'm surprised, you get a whole month, 30 days of Ramadan. Some people didn't even pray one night of taraweeh. May Allah protect us. Taqwa is not just an easy word. Taqwa is making a barrier between you and the haram. And worshiping, worshiping Allah upon the light from Allah, seeking His reward. Qatada rahimullah said, A person protects his family by telling them to obey Allah and forbidding them from disobeying Him. He upholds Allah's commands and helps his family to uphold them. So if you see some disobedience of Allah, you stop them from doing it. And you, and you na'am, mention them, reprimand them, or tell them that this is wrong. Na'am. After the death of, of his wife, Um Salih, Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, used to praise her. And, and he once said about her, in the 30 years she was with me, we never had a single word of disagreement. We never had a single word of disagreement. Why? Because the household was based upon ad dinu nasiha advice. No one's perfect. Marriage is up and down. Difficulties occur. But... Look at the great imams, the like of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. He said, I never, in 30 years, not even one word of disagreement. So first and foremost, taqwa. And the one who really loses, is the one who loses himself and his family in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ That is the great loss. Why? Because he didn't take the steps to build a happy home. Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin rahimullah, he said about this verse, وَإِنَّنَا لَنَعْجَبْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْجَبُونَ مَعَنَا أَنْ يَضِلَّ أَقْوَامٌ فَيَعْتَنُونَ بِتَنْمِيَةِ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَرِعَايَتِهَا وَصِيَانَتِهَا وَحِفْظِهَا وَاشْتِغَالِ أَفْكَارِهِمْ 
وأبدانهم وانشغال بأموالهم عن راحتهم ومنامهم ومع ذلك ينسون أهلهم وأولادهم They are busy he said and how surprised we are to see people are busy gathering wealth trying to make it I have one house want two houses I have this one want this want that just want more 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 but forgetting what is the main call and forgetting what is the objective leaving he said we are surprised that we find them forgetting their families and children وَإِنِّي لَسَائِلُهُمْ And he says, I ask them, مَا قِيمَةَ هَذِهِ الْأَمْوَالِ What is the benefit of this wealth? What is the worth of this wealth that you are gathering? بِنِسْبَةِ لِلْأَهْلِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Compared to your family, your wife and your children. Who is more important? Your wife and children or the wealth? Who is more important? You can't give a value to your wife and children. For oh Allah has blessed you with. أَلَيْسَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَرْ بِهَاُولَاءِ يُخَصِّسُ شَيْئًا مِنْ قُوَّاهُمُ الْفِكْرِيَّةِ وَالْجِسْمِيَّةِ لِتَرْبِيَةِ أَهْلِيهِمْ وَأَوْلَادِهِمْ Shouldn't they use the, some of their effort huh? and their time in order to educate their children and families? Salamat Allah. Number one. From the benefits of making a happy home, or from the reasons of making a happy home. Number one, عليك أن تحسن اختيار الزوجة. First of all, choose the right wife. Don't choose a dunya woman, always in the shops. Come, come, let's go, let's go. Always wasting you. Don't choose that. And the woman as well. Don't choose a dunya man. Always, ah, huh? forgetting his salah, forgetting his ibadah. Choose somebody. Who is going to guard you and protect you? As the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned, Hadith of Abi Hurairah radhiyallahu anhu. تنكح المرأة لأربع لمالها ولحسبها ولجمالها ولدينها فضفر بذات الدين تربت يداك. The woman is married for four: for her wealth, for her status, for her beauty, and for her deen. So choose the one, huh? who has the deen, who has the akhlaq, the good manners, and also the fathers. And we all have children, and we all have daughters, inshallah. And those who don't, then may Allah bless you with daughters. But the responsibility, somebody comes for the handy marriage for your daughter. You have to see them. You have to know who they are. What is their akhlaq? Inquire about them. Regarding their what? Their deen and their akhlaq. Man ja'akum, man tardawna deenahu wa khuluqahu. Whoever comes to you. So the, if the, he has to come to you. Huh? Shaykh Ubaid Habibullah said about this hadith, he has to come then. Not on the, in, not on the internet. Huh? Now, mashallah, quick. Get married on the internet. Who's the wali? Well, nobody knows. Whoever comes to you. Why, why is it that they should come to you? Because the woman on her own, she's in need of a guardian to protect and aid her. And you are the guardian, the father, or the brother, or the uncle. You are her guardian, and you protect and her protector. Naam. And so, they come to you. And you are pleased with their deen, and their khuluq, and their manners. Because that's what's going to stay and remain. Not the dunya. You are pleased, first and foremost, deen and... And what about if they're not working? Or they are working? Is that important? Sheikh Salif Uzan said it's important. Why? Because it's mentioned in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned about the... Uh, the daughters, the two daughters... Uh, the two daughters who asked their father <coughs> regarding uh, Musa alayhi salam that make, uh, yani allow him to work with us. Allow him to work with us yani on, the, on cultivating the land. Huh? And when the father saw Musa alayhi salam's yani effort, striving, working, what was said? 
إِنَّ خَيْرَ مَنْ إِسْتَأْجَرْتَ الْقَوِيُّ الْأَمِينَ Sheikh Salih Fawzan said about this verse, إِنَّ خَيْرَ مَنْ إِسْتَأْجَرْتَ The best one that you can uh, 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 hire is one who is strong and who is truthful. So therefore this was a reason for him to marry the daughter. Is that he is qawi and amin. So therefore, Sheikh Salih Fawzan said, this is also another characteristic that you look with regards to the person that you're going to marry. Is he qawi ul amin? Or is he a person who just sits around, does nothing? Is he a person that strives and sweats? Does he's out and about trying to earn an, a living and feed his family? Or is he just somebody who sits around? Qawi ul amin. Inna khayra man istajarta al qawi ul amin. So therefore, number one, choosing the right person. And here, as a nice benefit here, the Prophet said, regarding the person that the uh, uh, the one who is of who has much blessing and benefit is the one who has a good tongue, who remembers Allah much, who is a heart that is grateful, and he has a believing wife. Who aids him upon his iman. And that is hadith which is in Muslim Imam Ahmad with Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and Shaykh Albani said it's Sahih in Sahih al Jami. So therefore, choosing the right spouse. Al Wadud al Walud. The Prophet mentioned about the woman that you choose. Al Wadud, the loving woman. And the walud, the one who are fertile to give birth to children. Al wadud al walud. Wadud, loving. Because you want a happy home. You don't want a home where both parties are miserable, long faced. Nothing to do. Like one brother said to me, I just got married, but I don't love my wife. Subhanallah. I said, Did you give her a gift? He said, No. I said, Give her a gift, Ya Rajul. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تهادوا تحابوا give gifts bring about love between yourselves you can't even do that for your wife bring gifts surprise her with a gift and she will do the same inshallah that will bring about love between you what are you doing then to bring about that love what are you doing to bring about that care and mercy and kindness and a happy home what are you doing not just about take, it's about give as well. And give more than you take. Number two. If you don't have a good wife, because it's possible that you're already married and you're listening already now, it's already happened. Okay, qadr Allah ma sha fa'al. Then you try your best now to help the situation improve. By starting to educate. By you starting yourself first. By benefiting yourself. Helping yourself to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then striving, tas'a li raf'i imaniha. Strive to raise her iman. And one way you can do it is slowly, slowly make the house a house of the dhikr of, of dhikr of Allah. Such that you listen to Quran regularly. We don't have to listen uh, to just chat shows and all this, you know, kalam fadi. Listen to Quran regularly. Because wallahi, we listen to Quran regularly, reminded of that. The children, they start getting used to it. In the household. And I saw that in Sheikh Rabi Hafidullah's house. Oh, Quran. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the Quran. Just played for the house. For his children. And for other members of the family. Just to listen to Quran. Regularly. So how is that? Is that a household that we are upon? Of listening to Quran in the house or not? Number three, the husband, when he strives, men, they have been given that strength over women in, sen in the sense of that daraja, that level, whereby they go out and feed their family. They work and that in order to feed their family and give them shelter and give them clothing with that which they, uh, the same level that they buy for themselves, the same food that they eat for themselves, the same as what they have for themselves, they give for their family, or even give them better. So therefore, when, when the wife sees that, 
and you are striving to give her her haq, then she will strive to give you your haq, your rights. وَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ And give everyone their rights. Number four, أَنْ تَجْعَلَ الْبَيْتِ مَكَانًا لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ You make the house, a house, a place for the dhikr of Allah. Don't make it like the graveyard, dead, no Qur'an, no sunnah prayers. Subhanallah. Even if your children come next to you and they're not even wearing anything, you know a two-year-old kid walks around, sometimes they're not wearing, they take off their nappies or whatever, they're not wearing anything. Huh? And they're praying next to you. Don't worry, don't push them away. They are learning. The Prophet ﷺ, he, while he was praying, Hassan and Hussein, they came on his back. He didn't get up from prostration until they got up. Let them play. Let them come around you and be with you. Because they are like, just like the, the cats that are going, tawafuna alaykum. They're just passing by around you. Young. They're innocent. They don't know any better. But you know, they, can, they are learning what you're doing. When you're prostrating your sunnas in your house, and you're doing your bowing in your house, they come and you'll see them saying, Allahu Akbar. And they will follow you, even to the extent of moving the finger when you move it into shahud. You will see them do that next to you. So building the household upon the dhikr of Allah by making some of your adhkar in the house, some of your sunan in the house. Number five, striving your utmost to bring a teaching environment, a learning environment in your household where you do a weekly dars. And we all fall short in this. But we have to strive by starting with basic books, Usul al I asked Sheikh Muhammad, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi al-Madkhali, I want to start this class in the house. How should I do it? Which book should I start off with? Should I start with the, with the Riyadh al-Salihin? Or should I start with... Because you know, we want to build the akhlaq, the manners in the household. What book should I start with? He said, start with Usul al Because in Usul al there is akhlaq. Allahu Akbar. And in Kitab al-Tawheed there is akhlaq. Look, you know why? Because akhlaq starts with what? Ikhlas. Sincerity to Allah. The akhlaq between you and Allah. Not like some... some there's a graduate from... Uh, graduated in, Amer- is in America now. Huh? He said, these books, they won't rectify the community. The problems of the community. What will then? If Tawheed is not going to rectify, what will? Ya Rajul. What will? If Tawheed doesn't rectify, what will? That means you don't know the da'wah of the prophets and messengers. Tawheed is what rectifies. If you teach your children to be honest, that Allah is watching them all the time, that He knows what they are doing, in the corner of the house, they will not, huh? they will not be able to hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't this teaching them akhlaq? Aqeedah comes first. If you only knew. But this shows you, those who don't sit with the ulama. They just get the piece of paper. They graduate, they get the piece of paper. Uh, it doesn't benefit them. And Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadin Madkhali said, even if they end up teaching inside the Kaaba, uh, if they don't know Tawheed, it will not benefit them. Even if they're teaching inside the Kaaba. And look at this great blessing. You strive, and you get to Jannah, inshallah, Allah will raise your children if they fell short. To raise them to your to the level you are in paradise. Look how great that is. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ بِمَا كَسَبَ رَهِينٍ Those who believe, their families will follow them upon iman. So those who are upon iman, they will follow them. أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ Allah says, أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ he will make them rise, go to that level that you are at. If you are pious, and you are righteous, and Shaykh Ibn Uthaymir said about this, he said that if you are higher than them in Jannah, he will make them go up to that level that you are at. Because you are righteous. Because you, as a father, as a mother, you strove your utmost to educate them, to teach them, to show them the importance of the dhikr of Allah, the importance of Al-Islam in its practical sense. So Allah will raise those children who fell short and maybe they were in the lowest heaven or maybe you will be able to intercede for them maybe they entered the hellfire Allah forbid 
you'll be able to aid them insha'Allah because you yourself strove your utmost. So therefore, there's no turning back for us. No turning back. The more you learn, there's more on your neck. And the more you are responsible, shaitan will come to you at the beginning, don't learn. If you don't know, you're not responsible. So don't know, don't know, don't, know, don't, don't, don't strive to know. You see, that's the beginning. He does that to everyone. Don't think it's just you or me. Every single one. Shaitan doesn't want you to learn. Because he knows those who learn and strive to learn knowledge, it will aid them to protect themselves from him. So he doesn't want you to learn. But once you have learned, and you know the seriousness of this affair, there's no turning back. Otherwise, hypocrisy. Masallah salama. Hypocrisy. Nifaq. You know and you don't do. That's the way of the Jews. They knew and they didn't practice. غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ And they're the ones Allah was angry with. Because they were given the scriptures and they didn't practice. That which they were given. Number six, a dua How powerful the dua is. How about if you read Surah Al-Furqan? وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Our oh Lord, make for our, make our children, our wives and children, when we look at them, the coolness of our eyes. Make them, when we look at them, the coolness of our eyes. The scholars mention, when will they be the coolness of your eyes? When they turn to Allah Azza wa Jalla. When they are upholding the Salah, and they are upholding the Qur'an. How beautiful it is your children to memorize Qur'an. And to put on you as the father or the mother a crown on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Because you aided them to memorize the Qur'an. How beautiful that is. How beautiful it is you aided them to learn the Arabic language so they can know the deen of Allah. How beautiful it is that you you raise the importance of knowledge in the household. The knowledge of the deen of Allah in the household. Which will help them inshaAllah for their life when you pass away. So therefore, Allah, if we give concern to ourselves in our deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children in the akhirah and the dunya. The dunya, where Allah azza wa jal said, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا فَأَرَادَ أَنْ يَسْتَخْرِجَ كَنْزَهُمَ رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكْ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي Because you were righteous. And that story in Surah Al-Kahf, the man was righteous and the, the, the orphan's uh, treasure was protected. When the wall was about to fall, and Khidr alayhi salam, he fixed the wall. Yes. Khidr alayhi salam was the strongest position. He was a prophet. Uh, not the Sufis. The Sufis say, oh, he's, he, was, he was a wali of Allah, not a prophet, and the awliya are better than the prophets. Huh? The prophets are the awliya of Allah, ya rajul. How could they not be the awliya of Allah when they are people of Tawheed? So don't be de- deluded. Khidr was a Nabi. As Shaykh Muhammad al-Banna rahimahullah mentioned, even though there's difference of opinion in the matter, but the point is, look, Khidr alayhi salam, he aided. Uh, he aided that wall to be put, so that the, he, he, he put back the wall, so that the treasure or the inheritance of, of those orphans can be protected. Why? وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحَا Because their father was good. Their father, their, their father was righteous. And Shaykh bin Baz Rahimullah said, because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected their children. You want your children to be protected? Kun salihan. Be righteous. Number seven. Make an Islamic library in your house. Where the children realize these are books that we can go back to and read. People buy lots of nursery rhymes, and books, fairy tales and this. Bring stories of Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, stories of prophets, reminders in the household of the best people ever to be. Maktaba. Number eight. Da'wa. Or da'wa to salihin wal akhyar. Call in the righteous to your house to eat. 
so that your wife can mix with good sisters and your children can mix with good children. They have good community because sometimes it doesn't work from you. You tell them so many times, but when their friends tell them, they do it. Huh? That's how children are. Especially when they get to about 15. They love friends when they get to 15. So you be a friend to them. You be a friend to them. Discipline, no doubt, starts early. Teach them at 7, hit them at 10. Not beat them. Black and blue. This is not the way of Islam. Harming your children like that is amana. This is a trust that Allah has placed on your neck. Calling then the righteous to eat at your household. So that they can inshallah benefit, benefit the children. And, the Prophet, and here there's a hadith where the Prophet said, الرجل على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخلل أو يخالل Here in hadith in Tirmidhi which is Hasan which is a hadith on Hasan نعم والحاكم صححة and there's so many reports of that narration it's an authentic narration in another wording المرء على دين خليله The person is upon the religion of his friend so let him take, look to whom he takes as a friend Choosing the right, especially at that age, teenage years, giving your child at 15, at 14, friends, good friends, that they can help them to be righteous, away from the evil things that you see nowadays, children uh, spreading bad things on the net to each other, so they can look at bad things. Uh, Be careful. Make sure your household is a household where... The computers, if you have computers or these tablets, make sure they are passwords and they are protected away from the haram. Yes, you are responsible. No, mashallah, you are in the masjid and your children doing haram in the household. Protection for your children. You both have to work hard. The father and the mother have to work so hard. The children is amana. The Prophet ﷺ said, regarding the children, he said, God, God, or be just between the children. Being just to them is by bringing them that which will aid them in their deen. In their deen. So aiding them and being truthful to them in helping them to keep away from the haram is being just to them. Number nine, Adam idharak lil khilafat al a'iliyya amam awladik. You may differ with your wife, but don't show that in front of your children. Why? Because they end up disrespecting the other party. If you disrespect your wife, or she disrespects you in front of the kids, in front of the children, they will disrespect you and her. So don't do that in front of them. If you have to have a discussion, do it in your, in your, in, alone, away from the children. The children pick up so many things. They are memorizing what you are doing. Every step you take in, that you take, they will look at what you are doing. And they will mimic that and copy that. Number 10. Concerning yourself with the tarbiyah, with cultivating the children, and keeping them away from mixing with the evil children by choosing them good schools. Schools that they would benefit, following them up, well, we've seen many, many children not being followed up. We used to go around the schools of Medina as a mushrif, as a supervisor, going around to check our trainee teachers just to see how they fare in these schools. When we look at these kids, some of them from broken homes, hardly any parent, uh, parents coming to check up on their children, busy, leaving their, and the best kids are the kids where the the parents follow up their children in the schools. Following up not just in in their studies, but also in their manners. The best kids. We asked the headmaster, and many headmasters in these schools, how did the children, you know, what are the main problems? And he said, this is one of the main problems. Parents not following up. Children not being disciplined in their homes before they come to the to the 
schools. Number 11, As-samaha fi ta'amul. Forgiveness. Not everything you have to fight about and argue about. Every small, little, minute detail we have to argue about. No. Forgive. And usually, and sisters may be upset about this, but this is usually the case that women remember a lot. More than men. They will tell you something that happened 10, 15 years ago. Men forget. This is, I don't know if this is the nature of men and nature of women. Uh, but it's something that seems to be quite uh, common. They will remember something 15 years ago. Something that you already solved. <laughs> and it's already khalas. Already made up and it's all gone. And, you know, but that still comes up. Huh? No. Don't do that. Samaha. You be, you be for yani, forgiving and you be overlooking. Allah will be like that with you. As Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah mentioned in Wabil al-Sayyib. How you are is how you will be treated. Kama to deen, to dan. As you treat others, you will be treated. And what the English say, what goes round comes round. But the Rasul Sassam already preceded them. And he said, how you treat others, you will be treated. Kama to deen, to dan. So if you are merciful and kind and gentle, Allah will be kind and merciful and gentle with you. And if you are ja'dari, ghalid, faddan ghalid al-qalb, lam faddu min hawlik. If you are harsh, stern, the people will leave you. And if you are yeah, miserable, huh? stern, harsh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise will deal with you in similar fashion. So don't we want mercy of Allah? As you treat others, you will be treated. So show mercy, show forgiveness. And a samaha, overlooking. Not everything. Overlooking. And this is wallahi for all of us. This advice that I mentioned here is for me first and foremost. And this is not me telling you, this is me telling myself. As a reminder, because we all want to get to Jannah. Kun husnul khuluq. Number 12. Have good manners. Huh? Ma'a ahlik. With your family. فَإِنَّ خِيَارَ النَّاسِ أَحْسَنُهُمْ أَخْلَاقًا For the best of the people are the best of them in manners. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that. إِنَّ مِنْ أَكْمَلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا وَأَلْطَفُهُمْ بِأَهْلِهِ The best of those believers, the most complete of the believers in Iman, are those who are best in manners. And those who are most kind to their families. Hadith in Tirmidhi which is Hassan. Being kind. By giving. By good speech. Nobody's perfect. But if you made a mistake, take it back straight away. Don't let it prolong. Why be arrogant? Why raise your head as if you are towering above your wife? Man anta ya rajul. Who are you? You just a... Huh? You just a clot of blood and before that a sperm that, was, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created said kun fayakun. That's why are you then? Where did you come from? Looking down at others. Thinking that you are a huh? man. To beat your wife. You're a man. You're not a man. You're male. You're a male. You're not a man. As Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi said, a man doesn't do that. A man, a rajul, is one who's kind to his family. Who's gentle. He's merciful. He shows kindness. The Rasul Wasallam, in times, even in his household, if a utensil was broken, he would just pick it up and just not say, not say anything. Mercy. Love. And the women as well. Not to raise their uh, voices, showing that they are the ones who have, who are showing nushuz, disobedience. As well, creating... Putting oil on fire. It's already fire. Putting oil in it. <coughs> Extinguish the fire with water. If you're angry, say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Sit down. If you're still angry, lie down. Take the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Shaykh Ubaid Habudullah. He said that if the situation is fire in the house, leave the situation. Because now Shaitan is there. Leave the situation. Leave the house. The man. Walk out for... 
10, 20 minutes. By the time you come back, mashallah, all forgotten. Or at least, uh, it's a better situation. Because, uh, because you left that, that situation where shaitan was there between you two. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ shaitan أَنْ يُقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ Shaitan wants to cause enmity and hatred between you. That's his concern. Number 13. مُنَاسَحَةُ الْأَهْلِ عند التقصير Advising the family, the wife, and the wife advising the husband, but not in front of others. We all fall short. No man is perfect. No woman is perfect. We're not Sahaba. The Sahaba, we're not saying they're perfect, but Sahaba are better than us. So therefore, we strive to be like them. And we strive to be patient with each other. Sabr. Helping each other by advising each other. Ad-deenu nasiha. Ad-deenu nasiha. Ad-deenu nasiha. Qulna li man ya Rasulullah. Qala lillah. Advise each other to be sincere. Forgive me, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Is that big? It's too difficult? It's not hard. Ya Abdullah. It's easy. It's easy. And the real man and the real woman is the one who has, I won't call it guts, but the one who has bravery to speak the truth. And the one who has bravery to give up, to give up their rights and uh, to give up their rights and also not to ask for all of, uh, to give up the rights that, they, that others have on them and also not to ask for the rights that they have upon others. They are forgiving. They want to have the upper hand. They are the ones who, as Allah says, أحسن. Push forward with one that is better. Be the better person. The best of them are those who start with the salam. So start with that. Advising each other. This is the way of the prophets and messengers. They would advise each other. They would advise their people. Number 14. احذر من البخل One of the main problems we have in marriages is miserly. Miserly husbands. Huh? They don't want to spend. Salah Miserly fathers. They want to spend on their children. Ihdar min al-bukhul. Be warned of being tight-fisted. Walladheena idha anfaqu, lam yusrifu, wa lam yakturu. Wa kana bayna dhalika qawama. When they give, they are not tight-fisted. No, they extravagant. Huh? But rather they are in the middle. Balanced. Balanced. So buying for them that which will get, that which will, which they need. Of food, of shelter, of that which you eat, of that which you would want for yourself. Hubli nafsik, hubli akhik matu hubli nafsik. Love for your brother, we love for yourself. Hadith Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu. Number 15. Another problem that occurs is insulting and name calling amongst the spouses. This is common. And this, I don't know anyone who is not free, is, I don't know anyone who is free from this. This is something that could occur. But that comes by training. You, you can improve that by training your tongue. To not insult. By first and foremost, making sure that your children don't learn these words. By you not creating those words in your household. If they didn't pick up in school, they're going to pick up in their house. So in the household shouldn't be a household of shatim uh, and sib, of insults, of bad speech. The Rasul Sallallahu was described. Lam yakun Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi لم يكن رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم شتاما أو طعانا ولكن كان يقول خيركم عند الله أحسنكم أخلاقا The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was never a person who used to insult but he used to say the best of you in the sight of Allah are those who are good in manners those are best in manners so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify our tongues and be of those who are good with their tongues to their wives, to their children so that they don't pick up these bad words and especially not to insult them in front of their families or your family. To put them down, to belittle them. Because, كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ إِثْمًا أَنْ يَحْقِرَ أَخَاهُ الْمُسْلِمُ 
It is enough sin for a person is that when he, that he belittles his Muslim brother. He belittles them in front of others. Sin. And this is like you have put a, a wound on your family members, on your wife or your children, in front of others. If anything is wrong, alone. Advice. And it has more effect. Number 16. Just as you want your wife to be good with your parents and your family, you also should be good to her family and parents. In particular the parents. Buying them gifts. Saying good words to them. Calling them regularly. Yes. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And with the parents one uh, should show ihsan and ihsan is all good. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah mentioned that after he mentioned the severity of shirk and the importance of tawheed, he mentioned about the parents, showing you the la- great level that the parents hold in the sight of Allah. Being righteous to her parents and she be righteous to your parents. That's a beautiful household, a happy home. Where you, because she will love you more if you're good with her parents. And you will love her more when she's good with her And never, ever put your, uh, your wife in front of your mother. Preferring your wife over your mother. Especially your mother knowing. Yes, give your wife her rights. And give the mother her rights. But the mother takes precedence in terms of her fadl, her virtue. How can it be so when the Messenger وسلم, said, in the hadith when Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, Man awla nas bi suhbatika ya Rasulullah qala ummuk, qala thumma man qala ummuk, qala thumma man qala ummuk, qala thumma man qala thumma abuk. Your mother, your mother, your mother has more right to your companionship than anyone else in this world. Then your father. But we find, uh, unfortunately, those who give prefer- preference to their wives over the... Of course, if your wife is right on a particular matter, yes, don't show... Then, then show her that, yes, you are right, but just be patient. The mother, you know, they're, they're old. They sometimes get it wrong because of, you know, they're, they're over-caring and so on. Be patient. I know she said this and it was wrong. So aid in your, pa- your, your wife to understand these affairs. And likewise, the opposite. Number 17. Beautifying yourself for your wife. And the wife beautifying herself for the husband. Subhanallah. It's true. How is it you come home? The Prophet ﷺ used to come home. The first thing he would do is use his miswak. Ah, the first thing he would do. You come home, you're sweaty, smelly. Huh? You come in home, and you wonder why she's, she's you know, on the, on the other side of the house. <laughs> huh? It's true. And sisters as well. And he... The, the brother has gone out all day. Salama, especially in London. All day. In the fitan. Fitnatun Nisa. Awalu fitnati bani Israel. Fitnatun Nisa. The Messenger Sallallahu said the first fitna of the Bani Israel is the fitna of women. All day. He is trying striving his utmost. He doesn't look he looks down. Sallallahu Alaihi they're not wearing anything on their legs. Wherever he looks, is always fitna. Huh? And then he comes home, and you, Rasulullah Salama, as a wife, all over the place. Huh? Not caring the way you look. Not, yani, maybe the food smell is still on you. The, the, the scholars speak out against this. Try your best. You strive, and she should strive. The wife and the husband together, and also we have a statement, there's a statement from uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu radiallahu anhu kama argabu an tatajammala li he radiallahu anhu said 
I beautify myself for my wife just like I desire that she beautifies herself for me. Why? Because you are protecting each other away from the haram. You are protecting each other away from that which Allah is angry with by, by protecting each other's yani, chastity. Number 18. Know the level of what your wife has gone through. And the wife to know the level of what her husband has gone through. In striving, in going out to earn a living. Striving huh, to get a job. Going out early in the morning. Just like the bird that goes out. Relying upon Allah. As in the hadith of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ لَرَزَّقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ Know what your wife has gone through and what you and know and the women to know what their husbands have gone through. The wife who strives to cultivate the children, who gave birth, and nine months she carried the chi- the child. Hardship upon hardship. So know each other's strengths, know each other's efforts, and recognize that and be grateful to that. وَلَا إِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِدَنَّكُمْ And if you are grateful, Allah will give you more of goodness. وَلَا إِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ And if you are ungrateful, then my punishment is severe. So being grateful to what Allah has given you, some a spouse that aids you to worship Allah. And the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, وَالْمُقْسِطُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةَ عَلَى مَنَابِرْ مِن نُورْ عَلَى يَمِينِ الرَّحْمَانِ The مُقْسِطُونَ, those who are مُقْسِطُون who are balanced with their families, they will be on pulpits of light on the Day of Judgment, on the right of Ar-Rahman, the right side of Ar-Rahman, or the right of Ar-Rahman. And here, kilta yadayhi, kilta ala yameen Ar-Rahman, so on the right hand of Ar-Rahman, wa kilta yadayhi yameen, and both hands, both of his hands are right, alladina yadiluna fi hukmihim, wa ahlihim, those who are just, in their judgments and they are just with their families subhanallah they will be on the right hand of ar-rahman on the day of judgment min manabir they will be in pulpits of light on the right hand of ar-rahman as the hadith said in sahih muslim hadith rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam la yufrik la yafruk mu'minun mu'minatan in kariha minha khuluqan Muslim. Do not let a person, a, a person, do not let a believer to uh, harm a female believer, yani his wife or his daughter. Uh, if he dislikes something in her, in terms of her character, he should look at some other character that he likes in her. So do not insult her, do not harm her. Do not beat her because of that uh, character that you dislike. But rather educate her and help her to learn. So that is nine, number 18. We said 20. Number 18 is yani, to recognize each other's uh, efforts and also to be grateful to that by being just towards them. Number 19, to respect your own parents. You want a happy life? You want a happy life? Respect your mother and your father, your own immediate parents. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with a good wife and a happy life. Starts first of all with tawheed, al ikhlas, al tawheed. But after that, wa bil walidayni ihsana. How is it? You are upon sunnah and you can't. And you and you and you and, and and you can't visit even your parents, and they live just a few doors away, or they're just down the road, and you can't call them. Well, lie. We have stories, shocking stories. Questions used to be asked to Sheikh Ubaid, Hafidullah, about these particular situations where the person would not uh, be righteous to his parents. Well, lie. The end result for many of these is a miserable life and a miserable death. Don't be miserable to the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given you to aid you, to clothe you, 
to feed you, to help you crawl and talk and walk. And then you be hard on them. And then you be, huh? And you put your wife in front of them. So number, 19, number 18 or 19? 19. 19, your parents, especially your mother. A door from the doors of paradise, inshallah. And number 20, look at the examples of the best people who are around you. And those that we have seen are the ulama. We used to see Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri, hafidullah, every morning, every morning going out. And I can see when he gets the groceries, the, the bags, the marks of the bags on his fingers from the heavy bags. He refused to let me carry the bags for him. And he's blind. But still, every morning he would love to serve his family. It's like an enjoyment. It's not a burden. It's not a difficulty. It's not a hardship. But he loved to do that for his family. Sheikh Muhammad al-Banna, rahimullah, every week, gathering with his family members every Wednesday night and used to call myself and my family to attend. That was 18 years ago, the good old days. Huh? Rahimahullah. And he used to... He, huh? he used to make sure that you are fed. He would get up himself, treating the guests. And that's another good khair. Being good. And, and, and welcoming guests to your home. You want a happy home? Welcome guests. Feed them. Don't be miserable and tight-fisted. How many in this community now, community in Slough, Merkaz Mu'adir, how many of us have visited each other's homes? Very few maybe. Sheikh Muhammad al-Banna, rahimullah, every Wednesday, open his house. And on, Friday, uh, on Thursdays, absolute strangers from the haram invited him to his house to break iftar. Even though they were not fasting, he would break his iftar and he would be standing up serving every single one, putting the chicken and the meat and the... Huh? And one surprising thing, he would still be drinking coke. I said, Sheikh, in your 90s, you're still drinking coke. Huh? We were told, you know... He said, Alhamdulillah, if you fast regularly, your body will take care of you. Your body will take care of you. You can eat anything if you fast regularly. He used to fast Mondays and Thursdays. And his body will take care of him. Even though he was drinking coke huh? in his 90s. We drink coke, subhanAllah, we died <laughs> next day on the ground. <laughs> Unhealthy. SubhanAllah. So look at the kindness that he used to show with his family. I said, Ya yeah, Sheikh, why don't you eat with us? He says, I, I, I promised my wife to eat with her. He would wait from Maghrib, from Maghrib no actually, Maghrib to Isha in the Haram. He read in the Quran. He would just be breaking his dates with uh, uh, breaking his uh, iftar with dates and strawberry mil milk tea. Don't ask me why strawberry milk tea. That's his uh, speciality the sheikh used to have. And then after Isha go to his house and he wouldn't eat. He would wait until he served us not just the main meal but also the fruit. And then we go. This is an hour later now. And then he would eat with his wife. Who would do that? Who would do that? Sometimes you go to some houses they say the tea, is in the, the tea bags are in the cupboard. <laughs> huh? What happened to serving your guests? Man kana yu'minun billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yukrim daifa Whoever believes in Allah on the last day then let him be good to his guests. You want khair for your house? Make your house an opening of good. Let your children see generosity, kindness. If they see this, that you are kind to your guests, Inshallah, you are teaching them through actions to be, how to be kind. And we've seen this with the ulama. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, rahimahullah, on every Thursday, large multitudes of people would come to, the, to ask questions and listen to his advice on Thursday morning. And then they would have lunch with him in his own house. Yani, that which was provided by the hukuma. And likewise other than them from the great scholars. Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi al-Madkhali. In a dars. He was given a dars. Imagine now, in a dars and he stopped. All of a sudden he stopped his dars. We thought, why is he stopped his dars? Because he saw his son right at the end waiting. He promised to give his son some money to buy some sweets or something from the shop. He said, forgive me, ikhwah. He called his son. 
He said, Wallahi, I promised him and I forgot. I just remembered when I saw him and he hasn't forgotten. <laughs> he didn't forget. You know, children don't forget. I was just going out the other day from the house. I told my daughter, I'm going to take you to Tesco. Five years old. Take a, take a Tesco. She's waiting the whole day. But something came up and I had to leave. Just before I'm leaving, didn't you say you're taking me to Tesco, daddy? When are you going to do it then? You see, they don't forget, children don't, as young as five. So don't promise them something and you don't do it. Don't promise them something and you don't do it. Sheikh Muhammad said, stop the dars. Call this son. And then afterwards he said, Ya Abdullah, Ya Ikhwa, these children is amana upon our necks. We teach them truthfulness and honesty so that they grow up learning this. Learning to be honest. And this is what we found with the rest of the ulama that we have seen. So number 20, take the righteous as your example. And the best one is Rasulullah And how he used to be in his household, gentle and kind and loving and caring. Naam. And that's how we should be. There's no perfect house, no perfect home, but we should strive our utmost. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم